There's a school of thought that shies away from describing meditation techniques for fear that you'll get too dependent on the technique or that it's beneath them to talk about things like technique. They want to go for the, the great insights. But how are the insights going to come if you don't look carefully at what you're doing? And the best way to look carefully at what you're doing is to have some specific ideas in mind about what you want to do as you meditate. Like focusing on the breath. When you're thinking about the breath, holding the breath in mind, you've got all the different forms of fabrication right there. The breath itself is bodily fabrication. Your directed thought and evaluation, that's verbal fabrication, the way that you talk to yourself. You've got perceptions in your mind about how the breath is running. And then you have the feelings that come from how you focus on the breath. It's all right there. And if you tweak one or the other of these fabrications, you'll see what the results are going to be. Or if things are not going well, you can ask yourself, well, which one is lacking? Having that framework in mind makes it a lot easier to pinpoint exactly where the problem is and how you can solve it. And to observe things that are different each time you, you, you go through the meditation. If the results today are different from the results yesterday, what was the difference? What caused the difference? Was it the perception? Was it the way the breath was going? Was it the health of the body? What were you talking to yourself about? How are you spreading the breath through the body? If you have things laid out like this, then it's a lot easier to pinpoint where the problem is and to develop skill. As the Buddha talks about, one of our purposes in being here is to develop the skill that we can get the mind into concentration where we want to and stay as long as we like. And that's not going to happen if you just allow things to happen on their own. It's like waiting for water to flow uphill. Now, someday the water may flow uphill if a meteorite strikes or if there's a tsunami, but those events are pretty rare. But if you get used to carrying the water up the hill, then the water goes up the hill. This is because of your efforts. If you figure out a water system that places the water even higher than it was to begin with, or higher than you want it to go to, then the force of gravity will push it up. As it goes down, then comes up again. In other words, you have to put an effort in for things to go against the natural way. Because awakening is not the natural way things are going to go on their own. The way of the world is death is followed by a rebirth with based on craving. The craving just keeps going and going and going. And we're trying to work against that craving. And the best way to do that is to learn how to observe your mind. And you observe it best when you have a clear technique. Not that the technique is going to do all the work for you, but it does help you become more observant. And your powers of observation are what going to give rise to the discernment that you're going to need. Because the discernment, when it comes, is going to be unexpected. So the best way to find what is unexpected is to be very observant, work on your powers of observation. And as they found out when they train people to be tasters, if you have a clear vocabulary and a very clear idea of what you're doing, it's a lot easier to de detect subtleties. So find a technique that works and stick with it. Be clear about what you're doing. And that way the things you need to know in the mind will become clearer as well.